Hey guys, it's Nikki and welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for watching today's video all about us staying off property. I know at Walt Disney World Resort. So we are 99.9% .9 pro of staying on property. But during our last trip in June, we did stay off property new for us. So in this video, I'm going to talk to you about where we stayed, why we stayed there, the things we enjoyed, things we might not have enjoyed. And so when you plan your Walt Disney World vacation, maybe this is going to be a great option for you. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. I love sharing lots of magical moments here at home and at the theme parks with you. So make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and let's get started. So as you know, we did stay off property in the resort that we chose to stay at this past trip, which we arrived a Friday night and we left a Monday. Monday afternoon we stayed at the Sheraton Vistana Villas on International Drive now there are two different Sheraton Vistana villages in Orlando they're pretty close to each other so just know that you know which one you are booking I have now stayed at both of them they are both super nice I prefer the International Drive Vistana just because the pool is a little bit bigger uh, we got a really awesome building building number and there are a lot of buildings around the pool so it was easy to walk to so definitely recommend International Drive Vistana just because of the pool and the different amenities not saying the other one isn't great it is but we really enjoyed the pool at the International Drive Vistana so the thing about the Vistana resorts are that they are villages, which means they're going to be your home away from home. If you stayed at DVC before, which is Disney Vacation Club, they're really similar to those types of rooms. So that means you're gonna get a full kitchen. You are most likely going to get a living room. They have one bedroom, two bedrooms. They are for like your larger family. I would definitely recommend checking out uh, the Sheraton Vistana resorts. If you plan on doing more in Orlando than just Disney. Honestly, after this whole stay, I did enjoy staying at the Sheraton in general. It was a great resort. I did miss being on property. So it really depends on what type of vacation you're having. For people who ask, should I stay on property or should I stay off property? It really depends on what you personally want to do. Let me know in the comments down below if I should do a video like digging into more of on property versus off off property, different things like that. Today's video is just gonna be focused around the Sheraton, but I can go in more in detail um, if that's something you guys are interested in. So let me know in the comments down below. The reason we chose to stay at the Sheraton being 100% transparent, my grandpa had points. He is a like a member, vacation member there. I don't know if that's what they call it. I just know like DVC terms. And he had points available that were going to expire. So he offered to allow us to stay there on his points, which was awesome. However, after getting that and booking and looking at the rates, you guys, Vistana is sometimes cheaper than the value resorts at Disney World. That shocked me. So the lowest rate for a one bedroom that's like a smaller villa, so you get a king bed, a sofa bed, that whole kitchen, it was $170 a night insane know that those prices will increase and maybe even decrease a little bit depending on the time of year but you could not beat that price that is lower than a value resort at walt disney world again depends on what type of vacation you want but if you're going for a while and you want to be able to have that full kitchen, Sheraton Vistana is going to be a great property for you. Like I mentioned we got in on a Friday. We actually got in the morning. We were gonna get in that night, but we changed our flights because we wanted to head to Oga's with our friends at studios that evening. And we were able to check in right away. I did call ahead of time, but they said it wasn't guaranteed. Like they couldn't add the request. It really just depended on what was available when we got there. We checked in, I think it was around 10.30 or 11.30 and our room was ready for us, which was super nice. We really appreciated that. I did work the rest of that Friday, so we just hung out in the villa. We went and got lunch by the pool. It was super convenient and extra amenities were great. So we really did enjoy using the pool. We used that, so Friday afternoon and then Monday before our flight, we were gonna head to the parks, but at that point, honestly, we were just kind of over Ubering and we didn't want to like 
be all sweaty and then have to go to the airport and it was super hot that weekend in June. So we definitely made the correct choice hung out at the pool, we used their showers and everything that they had available for us since we did have to check out, but it was very convenient. The big pro, like I mentioned, about the Sheraton Vistana is having that full kitchen. I am actually going to be staying again at the Sheraton in October of 2023, so depending on when you're watching this video, you might, those vlogs coming up might already be posted, not yet if you're watching it real live, in July of 2023 but we are staying there for an entire week pretty much and I'm really looking forward to seeing how we like that just because we'll have the option of that full kitchen we do normally stay at Old Key West when we have our big family Walt Disney World trips and that gives us that big kitchen which is so nice for breakfast for dinners we normally eat lunch out and about at the parks but just having that kitchen option one will save you a lot of money Two, you don't wanna always like eat theme park food every single day. And so just being able to come back, relax, put your feet up, enjoy the pool, make your own dinner. Yes, you're on vacation, but sometimes that's fun. And having a great time with your family or by yourself as well. It's just such a great option to have that full kitchen. The one thing I do wanna know is they don't have a cookie sheet. So during my last Day at a Sheraton for my best friend's bachelorette party. I don't even know what we ended up using as our cookie sheet for our pizza rolls, but they do not have a cookie sheet. So when you're ordering your groceries from Walmart, Amazon, wherever you're getting them from, make sure you put a cookie sheet on that. I don't know why they don't have them, but they have everything else. They have pots, pans, plates, knives, forks, and everything else you need. They have a coffee maker, coffee mugs, all the things. They just don't have a cookie sheet, which that's such, like such a random thing for them not to have. Also, I did want to mention that the Vistana does have up to three bedroom villas, and then every villa also has that sofa bed. So if you have a large family, you can really cram a lot of people in there. If you're having a friend group that go down to Disney, you can have tons of people. And with that low price, I think the three bedroom might be like 450 440 a night and if you split that with a lot of different people it can be so affordable so now let's talk transportation to the park so we always chose to do ride share so we did lyft or uber i feel like lyft is normally always cheaper around orlando but always just give both apps a check and it was about 10 to 20 dollars per ride and it was about a 10 minute drive so not terrible and that is including tip so the rides were pretty cheap it was just kind of annoying to have to like pay every single time we also love 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 to go back in the afternoon and that's just like something we weren't able to do we normally don't go back in the afternoon for like our quick weekend trips that we like to do but as we've like gone more, we do just like get tired and it's hot, especially in the summer and the afternoon. So it was a little disappointing, but we got over it and we moved on. The time we ran into a major issue with Uber and Lyft was after the Magic Kingdom fireworks. So for Magic Kingdom, you do have to get dropped off at the TTC when you're using that ride share and then you'll go through security and everything over there. From there, you would take a monorail or one of the ferry boats over to Magic Kingdom. If you're on property, you would just like take a, bo a bus and just jump right into the park. So after the fireworks, our Uber and Lyft were up to like 70 or $80. It was insane. It might have even been more than that. What we chose to do was walk over to the Contemporary. One, we didn't have to fight the people on the monorail. We didn't have to fight the people on the ferry boat. We could just walk over to the Contemporary. And since the Uber prices were so high, we ended up hanging out there for a couple hours. We just went to the bar. Um, it's right next to Chef Mickey's. It's just called the Outer Rim. We always really enjoy going there before, after dinner sometimes. And so we just headed up there, hung out, and waited for those prices to drop. It honestly was kind of frustrating because we had such a long day that day and we just wanted to get back, but we were not gonna spend that much for a 10 minute drive. Especially when you knew they're like $15 
or whatever it was the whole weekend and then just because the Magic Kingdom fireworks got done and they wanted to surge those prices, that's why it was so high. I believe they do do that every single night because we ran into that um, during my best friend's bachelorette party. It was ridiculous. So just know, even if you're in like the resort, Magic Kingdom resort area, if you're taking a ride share, that is going to be expensive. So just keep an eye on the time. If you're like at dinner at Polly and you need to get an Uber or live somewhere, just keep an eye on the time to know like when the fireworks are ending. And I'm not even sure when those surge prices start, but it was crazy. So after hanging out for a little bit um, at the Contemporary, then we were able to get a ride back. It was totally fine, it worked out great. Another option too is you can just hop on one of the resort buses and take that to the different resort that's away from Magic Kingdom and your price would be a little lower. So you also don't wanna pay like over $100. You can just get on a resort that's like close to the Sheraton, hop on those buses just to get away from the Magic Kingdom area. So overall, we really did like staying at the Sheraton besides the one time where we kind of got like screwed for the Uber and Lyfts after Magic Kingdom. It was fun hanging out and having a couple of drinks. Honestly, for like what, I think Jackson only maybe got a beer, but so it was cheaper. If in the long run. However, that was the only really frustrating part. So just know that if you do stay off property, keep an eye on those times and like what your prices are going to be. And if anything, you can jump over to another resort and pick up an Uber or Lyft there. The Sheraton was a great property to stay at and I am looking forward to staying there again. I will always be like an on-property girl probably but it was a great option and it is a great option if you have a larger family, if you want to stay in a villa resort but not pay those Disney prices. And you could also just rent a car as well because those prices of the room are so low, renting a car could totally work, especially if you're going to want to explore other areas of Orlando as well. You guys, thank you so much for watching today's video and hearing about our experience staying at the Sheraton Vistana Resort on International Drive. I I am looking forward to go back. Make sure comment down below if you would like me to do like a breakdown of like on property versus off property at Walt Disney World. I would love to chat with you guys about that. But I hope you have a magical rest of your day. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and I'll see you real soon. Bye.